Welcome back to episode 92 of the RunToGold.com podcast. In this episode, I want to talk about that massive implosion of a market called the Las Vegas rental market. So a few years ago, I had a friend who was living in Vegas, he and his wife, and they decided to rent instead of buy. Very smart move. We had discussed it. And the guy who he was renting the condo from had paid $1.08 million for this two-bedroom, two-bath condo. It was in the Sky Building, right there on Las Vegas Strip. Beautiful view of the city and the lights and everything. Uh, Really a great place to live. My friend was paying $3,700 a month, and $1.08 million. Today, there are a few two-bedroom, two-bath condos available for sale in that building for $148,500. $148,500. So when the fellow bought this condo, $1.08 million at $600 an ounce of gold cost him about 1,800 ounces of gold to buy this condo. Taking $148,500 divided by the current price at $1,750, you're looking at about $85 per ounce of gold. That's a difference of about an order of magnitude of 21. So you could have one condo or you could have 21 condos for the same number of ounces of gold. Wow. Now, not necessarily that the condos are absolutely comparable in terms of floor of the building that they're on, but they're both two twos in the same building, which is a nice class A condo complex. That's a huge change in purchasing power. But would anybody actually want to buy a condo in the sky right now? I don't really think so. You look at the HOA, it's about 50 cents a month per square foot. A thousand square foot condo, you're looking at about $500 a month for HOA. Then you look at the 3.2782% property tax rate in Vegas. So that's another $405 a month plus insurance. So, I mean, you're looking at $500 a month just for HOA, another $405 a month for taxes. So that's $905 without any insurance. And what can you rent these things for? I was looking around. There's eight or nine properties in the sky available for rent right now, two twos that are between $2,200 and $2,700 a month. But, you know, I was also reading this article about how somebody – had bought a 3-2 home in Vegas thinking that, oh, I'm going to rent this thing out as an investment slash rental. So they bought it for 134 Well, the problem is, is like, well, the first tenant just skipped out. And then the second tenant paid on time, but only wanted a six-month lease and then left. And so it's been vacant for a month and there hasn't been even one rental applicant. And I mean, in January alone, there were 22,800 properties added and only 414 rented. So what's going to have to happen is the price uh, that you're able to charge as a rental, it's going to have to just go down a lot. So this thing might be able to rent for 1500 a month, maybe even less, maybe 1200 a month. Because real estate value is ultimately a function of the underlying economy and it's kind of a catch-all for the wealth and the Vegas economy is just in the toilet right now. There was huge oversupply built of housing and other real estate and there's just not the disposable income to go and gamble anymore and so really the real estate there doesn't really have much value and even at $905 a month negative cash flow before even insurance then you have depreciation and all these other things like I don't even think Think it's a buy at 148. You know, maybe at 90,000 it would be a buy, and that's even pretty speculative. Like, why buy it even at 90,000 and sit on it when you have to pay the HOA and you have to pay the taxes and all of this stuff uh, to wait for the market to recover? So, the Las Vegas real estate market, I know it's a little bit of a, a stretch. It's it's a lot worse off than most other real estate markets in the U.S., but what you have to be worried about in this great credit contraction is the return of your capital in addition to the return on your capital. And even with the price of condos in Las Vegas down from 1,800 ounces to 85 ounces, I still don't necessarily think they're even a good buy.
And so this is kind of a problem that we're seeing because the price of money is going up. And that's what it does in a depression. And when you see the price of gold going up, what that means is that the wealth that had already been generated and produced in society that was somewhere else, being stored somewhere else, like in the fiat currencies, for example, when the price of gold goes up, it's really that savings that's being transferred, the purchasing power that came from that savings, that production that wasn't consumed. And so that's why holders of gold, because gold is money, despite what the Bernack says, gold is money and it's increasing in purchasing power. And this is a prime example where you could buy 21 condos where you could have only bought one just a few years ago. And there's just this massive wealth transfer that's taking place. And the thing about gold, you know, you can just sit on it and you can just wait. Like, because you don't have a $500 a month HOA fee and you don't have a $405 a month property tax fee and you don't have the illiquidity that comes from having your capital tied up in a built-in real estate. And you can just wait it out. So you can wait for that thing to go down to 90000 You can wait for it to go down to 50000 because it's hard to generate the top line. And you have to be able to generate the top line to generate the bottom line. You have to be able to generate the top line in order to rent the real estate. And so that's what we're going to continue seeing both in residential and commercial real estate is the top lines are getting increasingly more difficult to generate. And then we've got this inflationary bent by the Fed that with the quantitative easing that they're just trying to take the shortcut and prevent this credit liquidation. But that's what needs to happen. The credit liquidation needs to happen. And the more they try to prolong it, the greater the depression is going to be exacerbated. And we're just a few years into this what will probably be at least a decade or a few decades long depression. And you don't necessarily want to be sitting on a condo in Las Vegas even when the price is down over 90%. I mean, it's it's not even a good deal now. Anyways, that's a little bit about the Las Vegas rental market, a little bit of why it's still a good idea to be safely and securely stuck in your golden force field. Whether it's inflation or deflation, you're protected, you've got your capital, you know it's there, and you don't have to really worry about the yield or the return on investments that you're getting from these other, quote, non-sterile assets. Because sure, gold doesn't generate a yield, but it's still there, and it still buys something, and it's still going to buy something in the future. And who knows, maybe we'll be able to buy 50 condos in Las Vegas for the price of one condo just a few years ago. There are going to be a lot of good deals to be had out there, whether it's in condos or commercial office buildings or apartment buildings or stocks and equities, things like Chevron and GE. But at the same time, you know, there's still some more wealth transfer that has to happen. And so this has been episode 92 of the RunToGold.com podcast. Thanks for listening.